In this video, I'm going to be showing you some more tricks to plant trees using Gaia biomes. I'm also going to show you how you can do ground cover planting using those same biomes. This is the third in my series on using Gaia with the Tropical Forest Pack. The others covered the height map and texturing, as well as a first part on trees. If you haven't seen those videos, they're linked up above right now. If you have, let's get on with it. To get started, I'm going to create a new Gaia spawner and add it into the scene with the name Tropical Island Forest Transition Tree Line. That's a mouthful. Adding a spawn rule to that and visualizing it, we can see that the spawner will, as expected, try to spawn everywhere, since we haven't applied any masks yet. So I add in a texture rule that uses the forest ground we added in the texturing biome video, link up above if you haven't watched that yet. Now the spawner shows us that it will only spawn in the forest area but I want it to be on the tree line below that forest area. So I add in another terrain texture mask, and this time I use the grass texture. So now we have it appearing at the top where the forest is and on the slopes in between. Not exactly what we want, so what we'll do is move the forest rule below the grass rule and then switch it to be a subtraction rule. This means that the value found in the mask will be subtracted from the grass mask, meaning it'll only appear in areas where there is more grass than there is forest ground texture. I want the grass to be appearing further up into the forest tree line. To resolve this, we'll adjust the strength transform on the forest texture. If we make it such that it will only subtract if the amount of forest ground texture is high, then we'll see in the preview that it starts to move up the slopes because there's less forest ground as we get towards the lower end of those slopes. We can further accentuate this by adjusting the strength of the grass texture mask too. In this case, we'll make it stronger right the way across the board so that even a little bit of grass will increase the chances of these trees appearing. This is much better now, but I am going to be spawning on some of the steep slopes and that's not where we want to find our trees. So I add a slope mask in, reduce the upper end of the slope and adjust the strength curve so that it'll kick in more quickly. That looks much better in the preview so it's now time to add some trees and see what happens. I'll fast forward over this part of the video because adding trees is just a repeat of what I did in the previous video. So if you need more detail or you haven't seen that yet, take a look at the video linked above right now. Okay, and there's my trees in the tree line. It's looking good. You go up the hill here and enter into the main forest. But the ground is really bare, so let's do some ground cover work. For the forest ground cover, we'll need a new spawner, and as before, we'll add it into our scene. To avoid confusion, let's rename the tree biome whilst we're at it. Again, as with other spawners, the first thing to do is to add a texture mask for the forest ground and visualise it. Once we're happy with where we're going to spawn these objects, let's add a terrain detailed spawner and add the alocasia plants from the tropical forest pack into that spawner. I'm using terrain trees here because these alocasia are really large plants and therefore work best as trees on the terrain. Once we've done that, let's click spawn and drop into the forest to see what it looks like. That looks pretty good, so let's duplicate that rule and add in another of these alocasia plants. We'll spawn again, and this time let's take a look around in the transition tree line too. Hmm, we aren't getting many of these smaller plants out here, but we do want them, so let's fix that. Right now we're only spawning on the forest texture, so let's add the grass terrain texture to this spawner, and now we'll see them all over the tree line too. But we want them to be a little more patchy. We don't want them to be consistent across the whole area. We want them to grow in clumps together. So let's see how we can do that. To do this, we'll reduce the location increment so that we check for suitable locations more frequently. We'll also add a noise mask to each of the plant spawners so that they only appear in clumps. And having spawned, we can look around and we see there are none in most areas, but here we see three or four together. Going up into the main forest, we should see the same. Yeah, there's a group of three together. Now we'll duplicate these spawners and add in the banana cover plants. For the noise mask, we'll just move it slightly to the side so that we don't get them all appearing in the same places as the alocasia. This will give us some overlapping clumps, but for the most part, the two plants will be avoiding each other rather than fighting for nutrients. 
Finally, we'll add the palm cover in the same way. We'll duplicate the banana spawners, add the palm cover prefab and adjust the noise mask a little. Now we'll take a fly through to see what it looks like in the scene. It looks great down here on the beach line, as well as up into the transition tree line. However, inside the dark area of the forest at the top here, there's just too much ground cover. These plants need sunlight. So let's add a collision mask to the ground cover biome to keep them away from the larger trees. Spawning again, we can now see that it's much sparser inside the dark woods, but we still have plenty of clumping outside here on the main beach. Next up, we need to create some grasses in the scene. We'll add another spawner for these grasses, add it to the scene and the biome as usual, and then we'll add a spawner, a texture map for the grass texture area, and we'll visualize it. That looks good, so let's start adding the grasses themselves. The Tropical Forest Pack has some great grass patch PFABs, so we'll start with those. These have a higher rendering cost than the 2D texture based grasses, but they look a lot better and they break up the monotonous billboard textures that we'll be using soon. To really ensure we're seeing plenty of variety here, we'll add a number of different grass patches to the same spawner. Each of these will spawn at a random rotation and offset within a single spawn area. What this means is that each time Gaia spawns these grasses, there will be multiple grass patches spawned together, but never in the same pattern. I'm fast forwarding over this part of the video here. It's lots of repetition of what we just did, lots of fine tuning and so on. You can slow down the video and, and look at the changes I'm making, or you could just go ahead and download the spawners that are available in my GitHub repo linked in the description. Later, I'll be adding lots of 2D texture grasses. And if I was going to be doing this in a real game, I would identify the areas where I expect the player to go and have the patchy grasses, the, the 3D patch grasses, spawning in those areas. So when the player is up close, it would look a lot better. And when they're off distance, you'll still see lots of grass waving around in the wind. At this point though, it is worth highlighting that I also added a forest terrain texture mask to ensure that we got some of the grasses spawning inside of the main forest area. What I did though is I reduced the strength on this mask quite a lot to make sure that we weren't overpowered by grasses in those dark areas. Next up we'll need the ground cover in the forest itself. This is just more of the same. New spawner, put a mask on it using the forest texture, throw in a whole bunch of ferns, have them clump together, maybe have them clump around the smaller trees in this case, and just play around, just do what you want. This is the beauty of procedural generation. If you get it wrong, you can go back, change it, respawn, everything's wonderful. Don't forget, you can download the Gaia configuration files that I built for this from my GitHub repo below. There'll probably be one more video in this series. We're going to add in some rocks and things like that, and then we'll add some lighting and weather effects. See you soon.